good morning all of you and a warm welcome all to this today's session and my name is shalini faculty of care college of pharmacy and it's my privilege and pleasure to welcome you all to today's session an international webinar on pharmaceutical sciences okay now i request our guest on to the uh, webinar and a uh, uh, patron dr b vijay kumar sir and uh, convener dr p manjula madam and the co convener dr p kishor sir to the session organizing and today's session is organized by care college of pharmacy i am happy to announce that 1891 members have registered across the globe today for today's session and our management has taken this initiation of conducting the webinar for the benefit of the students and also various groups of pharma and now i welcome our eminent speakers dr suman rudrangi product and development and commercialization manager at kent athlon pharma group in uk and ireland welcome and welcome dr eminent... suman thanks dr sure and another speaker dr ganesh deep basakar garu professor and head department of pharmaceutics Shriman Suresh Dada, Jain College of Pharmacy, and thank you, sir, for accepting our invitation and your gracious presence on this uh, webinar and sharing their knowledge and views on the topic, drug cyclodextrin complexes and uh, Basakar Garu and microbial drug development. Thank you, sir. And now I request. Dr. B. Vijay Kumar, sir, to give a keynote address. Sorry, and uh, now we have an AV, small AV, on our college. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the beautiful AV. 
and now i give a brief introduction about our college care college of pharmacy is an institution established by the pharma care educational society and uh, by senior pharmacy professionals and we are successfully conducting the various international seminars conferences since inception to update our students in various areas of pharmaceutical sciences and now i, and now I request our dr director sir dr bbj kumar to give a keynote address and introduce the speaker dr suman rudrangi thank you <clears throat> good morning everyone i welcome everyone <clears throat> uh, to this uh, seminar uh, today is an auspicious day for us uh, because uh, vijay dasmi is starting in advance in the form of this seminar <clears throat> uh, recent trends in uh, pharmaceutical sciences yeah first of all <clears throat> my sincere gratitude to the speakers suman rudrangi and uh, uh, basarkar <clears throat> for accepting our invitation it is like an homecoming because after 6 months uh, we can able to see our students and uh, the keynote speaker is uh, my student uh, and Uh, Kanes Basarkar <clears throat> is my classmate. Yeah, I, uh, Dr. Su Suman, <clears throat> has grown to great heights. He has studied in our college, uh, Jangam Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, located in a very rural place. <clears throat> so, just I will give a brief introduction of uh, Dr. Suman. Dr. Suman Rudrangi is an accomplished chartered scientist, diversified with about 10 years of experience in formulation research and development, project management, and uh, overnight ranging from oversight ranging from project inspection to final delivery. He has extensive experience and excellent understanding of solid dosage form manufacturing. environment equipment promises and cgmp dr rudrangi pursued his bachelor degree in pharmacy from jangam institute of pharmaceutical sciences in the year 2018 and uh, is masters and phd uh, from university of greenwich <clears throat> dr suman currently works as a product development and uh, commercialization manage, manager at kent ethlom <clears throat> pharma group uk ireland earlier to the current role dr rudrangi worked in various roles as research associate scientist senior scientist executive scientist and manager of formulation research and development in well established organizations in the united kingdom dr rudrangi has successfully transferred formulation technologies to various organizations in the uk bulgaria ireland germany republic of ireland and india he is a member of royal society of chemistry uk member of the academy of pharmaceutical sciences great britain <clears throat> dr rudrangi has been awarded with the prestigious prestigious chartered scientist status by the royal society of chemistry uh, and the science council in 2019 <clears throat> dr rudrangi collaborates and delivers invited lectures at various universities in the uk usc germany and turkey <clears throat> dr rudrangi success stories have been published by the british council uk the times of india the hindu the voice of asia and all major telugu newspapers and magazines i am now handing over to dr suman rudran
thank you, Professor. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a great uh, warm welcome to me. <laughs> and uh, first, I would like to start with uh, saying Guru Bhyon Namaha and uh, to all the teachers. And uh, uh, Professor Vijay Kumar, thank you very much for inviting me to present a lecture uh, to the students of our place. And uh, I'm very honored, uh, first of all, to get an invitation from my guru, who I have uh, utmost respect for. <laughs> and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Okay, so can I start okay. the presentation? Yeah, you can start. Yes. Hi, friends. Uh, the presentation of the day is a dry cyclodextrin complex system, an approach to enhance the solubility and the dissolution properties of poorly soluble drugs. Uh, yes, as uh, Professor Vijay Kumar mentioned, I'm working as a product development and commercialization manager at uh, Kent Athlone Pharma Group based in UK and Ireland. And uh, yes, I did my Bachelor of Pharmacy at uh, Jangam Institute of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Kakatiya University in India between 2004 and 2008. And later I came to the United Kingdom uh, from Hyderabad <laughs> to pursue my Master's in Formulation Science at the University of Greenwich, UK between 2009 and 2010. Later, uh, I got an admission to pursue my doctorate in Pharmaceutical Science at the University of Greenwich and uh, did it between March 2011 and uh, September 2015 under the esteemed guidance of uh, professors Steve Wicks and uh, Dr. Bruce Alexander. And uh, at, at my PhD title is a Drug Cyclodextrin Complexes, an approach to enhance the solubility and uh, dissolution properties of uh, poorly soluble drugs. And uh, I worked on various uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients like uh, indomethacin, olanzapin, and flubiprofen, mainly uh class two bcs class two drugs which are poorly soluble and the objectives of this presentation of uh, this lecture for the day are uh, to learn about uh, various techniques to form drug cyclodextrin complexes and the importance and uh, i would like to discuss various aspects today one is solubility permeability dissolution and the difference between solubility and dissolution bioavailability biopharmaceutics classification system, methods to improve drug solubility, and uh, yes, finally, the drug cyclodextrin complexes. Okay, let's start with solubility. What is solubility? Solubility is defined in quantitative terms as the quantity or the amount of the solute that will dissolve in a given amount of solvent at a certain temperature. And in qualitative terms, it can be defined as a spontaneous interaction of two or more substances to form a homogeneous molecular dispersion. So as we can see from the image, it is a measure of how much solute dissolves in a solvent. And the process of solubilization. So this process involves breaking various interionic or intermolecular bonds in the solute. That is the separation of molecules of the solvent in order to provide space in the solvent for the solute and involves the interaction between the solvent and the solute molecules or ions. So as we can see from the image, holes open in the solvent. Later, the molecules of the solids break away from the bulk. And finally, the freed solid molecule is integrated into the whole of the solvent. There are various factors that, are, uh, that affect solubility. Those include molecular structure, temperature, pH, and dosage form. So these are the important factors that affect solubility. And coming to drug permeability, it can be defined as the ability of a drug to pass through the biological membranes. And permeability is a key factor in the absorption of in the absorption and distribution of drugs. So I repeat it, permeability is a key factor in the absorption and distribution of drugs. And poor permeability can lead to poor absorption across the gastrointestinal mucosa or poor distribution throughout the body. So we can see the image below. 
and uh, hello lipophilic drugs are more permeable and hydrophilic drugs are less permeable i repeat it lipophilic drugs are more permeable and hydrophilic drugs are less permeable coming to drug dissolution so what is drug dissolution in a day-to-day -day pharmaceutical life, we hear the terms solubility, permeability, dissolution, disintegration. So what's drug dissolution? It's a process in which a substance or a drug or yeah forms a solution. So drug dissolution tests measure the extent and the rate of solution formation from a dosage form. May it be a tablet or a capsule or ointment? under standardized conditions of liquid and solid interface, temperature, and composition of the solvent. The dissolution of a drug is very much important. It's crucial for its bioavailability and therapeutic effectiveness. So the dissolution studies provide critical in vitro drug release information, may it be for the quality control purposes or for the drug development. And the in vitro drug dissolution data that's generated from the dissolution test or experiments can be related to the in vivo pharmacokinetic data. So we have learned, so we might have heard about, heard about IV, IVC. So these in vitro drug dissolution data can be related to the in vivo pharmacokinetic data. Coming to the differences between solubility and dissolution. Solubility is a measurement of how much of the drug, the quantity of the drug that can be dissolved in a given volume of a medium. But dissolution is a measurement of the rate, I repeat, rate at which the drug after undergoing some process may it be the mixture of drug and excipients or compression, coating or micronization. So undergoing some process dissolves in solution basically solutions the solubility is for a pure or unaltered drug while dissolution is done for altered drugs and solubility it is a thermodynamic phenomenon here the drug in solid is in equilibrium with the drug in solution and as we can see the equation the drug in solid is in equilibrium with the drug in solution and to check the solubility, it may take years in order to achieve this equilibrium. So the most important thing is equilibrium. And dissolution rate is a measurement of how fast the drug is dissolved into the medium. And it's a kinetic phenomenon. So we can see the difference here. Solubility is a thermodynamic phenomenon where dissolution is a kinetic phenomenon. And dissolution process is limited by time and driving forces of equilibrium to the right. So what drives dissolution? <laughs> solubility drives that. Yes, solubility of drug in solution. So when you start your dissolution study, you must know that the solubility of the drug in the testing medium is of crucial importance. And coming to bioavailability. The degree and rate at which an administered drug is absorbed by the systemic circulation. So we talk about the drugs or actives being bioavailable. So here it means that the degree and rate at which the drug gets absorbed into the systemic circulation, into the blood levels. And uh, there are various factors uh, that affect bioavailability. They are solubility, as we discussed before, solubility and dissolution rate. So I would like to tell that an increase in the drug solubility would definitely increase dissolution rate. So an increase in drug solubility later with the dissolution rate would definitely enhance the bioavailability of the drug substances. And some other important parameters or attributes are the particle size, the powder flow characterization, polymorphism, salt form of the drug, lipophilicity, and pKa of the drug and pH. So these are the various factors that affect bioavailability. And this is measured by calculating the area under curve of the drug concentration time profile. And as we can see before, as we can see below, bioavailability fraction, that is F, it refers to the fraction of administered dose that enters into the systemic circulation. So that enters into the systemic circulation. And this fraction is a ratio of the available dose versus 
they administer dose. And difference, and there are two types of bioavailability made the by absolute and relative. So by bio, bioavailability, as I mentioned below, before it's measured by calculating the area under curve of the drug concentration time profile and absolute bioavailability is determined for the same drug in various formulations example comparative study of bioavailability of a drug may be aspirin or ibuprofen or paracetamol any drug given through the oral route and intravenous route so it is determined for the same drug, but in different formulations, maybe the tablet or IV. I repeat it, absolute bioavailability is determined for the same drug, but in various formulations. Next one is relative bioavailability. This is determined for various drugs. For example, a generic formulation, for example, paracetamol tablet, it is compared with the standard formulation of same drug, maybe we can say an innovator or a reference product in the same dosage form. So tablet versus tablet, but it's a generic versus a branded, we can say, or an innovator or a reference list drug product. So generic formulation is compared with a standard formulation of same drug in the same dosage form. So the difference is that in the absolute bioavailability, it is for the same drug in various formulations oral or IV, but here it is the generic versus the branded or the standard formulation of same drug. And as we are talking about the absorption, the solubility, dissolution, bioavailability and permeability, it's very much important to illustrate the average time a drug spends in each part of the digestive system along with the average pH. So as we can see in the image, the immediate release dosage forms and delayed release dosage forms, they, they take a different time, maybe up to one minute or 60 minutes or three hours based upon the part of the digestive system. And if you can see the delayed release, it is taking 30 to 60 minutes for the drug to pass through the duodenum at a pH of 7 to 8.5. And in ileum, the colon pH above 7, it takes about 10 hours or even more. And coming to the biopharmaceutics classification system, this is a system devised by Professor Gojon Amaidon. Actually, I'm lucky I have, to, I have met uh, Professor Amaidon in uh, 2016 when I went to present a lecture in uh, Louisiana. <laughs> And BCS is a guide for predicting the intestinal drug absorption provided by the United States FDA. And as per this US FDA classification, as per this BCS classification, the drugs are classified into four classes based on the permeability and solubility. And as we can see from the screen, class one drugs are highly permeable and highly soluble. These drugs are very well absorbed and their absorption rate is usually higher when compared to the excretion. So it, we need to remember that the absorption rate is higher than excretion. And coming to the class two, these drugs are high permeable and low soluble. The bioavailability of these drugs is limited by their solvation rate. And However, we can find the correlation between IV bioavailability and the IV solvation. So in vivo bioavailability and the in vitro solvation, this can be found in the class two drugs. In the class three drugs, these are low permeable and highly soluble. Class three drugs, the absorption is limited by the permeation rate, but the drug is solvated very fast because of the high soluble property of these drugs. And if the formulation does not change the permeability of our gastrointestinal duration time, then we can apply the criteria, class one criteria. And coming to the fourth class, that is class four, these are low permeable and low soluble drugs. And uh, these are the problematic drugs, I can say. And uh, these drugs have poor bioavailability and uh, they are not well absorbed over the intestinal mucosa. And I can, I think if I have shown the image of the permeability, 
So the drug needs to be permeable through the intestinal mucosa, but these drugs are not well absorbed over the intestinal mucosa and a high variability is expected. So these are the four classes. Class one is of high permeability and high solubility. Class two, high permeability and low solubility. Class three, low permeability and high solubility. And the final one, class four, low permeability and low solubility. From the image, we can see that the solubility increases from class two to class one and the permeability increases from class three uh, to class one. And the, Class 1 drugs are very much ideal because of their high solubility and high permeability properties. And various examples of class 1 drugs are metoprolol, propronolol, diltiazem, verapamil, and various water-soluble vitamins. And class 2 drugs, the examples include nifedipin, felodipin, nicardipin, and antifungal ketoconazole. Class 3 drugs High soluble but low permeable. Examples are cimetidine, acyclovir, captopril, and inalapril. Class 4 drugs are the low soluble and low permeable drugs, and these are inappropriate. So, examples are the HCTZ, hydrochlorothiazide, and the diuretic furosemide, tobramycin, famotidine, indinavir, saquinavir, lopinavir, and ritonavir. Friends, if we can remember these final drugs, these viral drugs, a lot of clinical trials are still going on for their capability and capacity to check for their work or their efficiency for the treatment of corona, that's COVID-19. So indinavir, saquinavir, lopinavir, and ritonavir. So you should understand how hard our drug development and discovery scientists are working to get these drugs to work well, up to the best of their capabilities. So. There are various techniques to enhance the solubility and permeability, the GI permeability of these drugs. And as I mentioned in the previous slide, class one drugs are very much ideal for the delivery. And there are various techniques that are used to enhance the solubility of these drugs. The techniques include particle size reduction, soluble salts, solid dispersions, and various systems, including cycloreduction complexes. And there are various absorption enhancing excipients or efflux inhibitors for increasing the permeability and we can see in the next slides about various techniques that are used for enhancing the drug solubility and the dissolution rate and coming to solubility is important so previously we have seen what is solubility what is dissolution, what is permeability, and finally, what is bioavailability. But I would like to take you through the importance of solubility. So the therapeutic effectiveness of a drug depends upon the bioavailability and ultimately upon the solubility of drug molecules. As I mentioned earlier, enhancement in the solubility would definitely enhance or increase the dissolution rate. So with an increased solubility and dissolution property, a drug would be well bioavailable. However, as we can see, nearly 92% of the new drug candidates, 40% of new chemical entities, and about 33% of the pharmacopoeial drugs are poorly water-soluble. See, 92%, 40%, 33%. So this is very much problematic for the drug development and discovery scientists to look into this aspect. And with the introduction of combinatorial chemistry and high-throughput screening, the properties of the new chemical entities shifted towards higher molecular weight. So I repeat, higher molecular weight and increased lipophilicity. So the increased molecular weight and increased lipophilicity is a major problem here that results in decreasing aqueous solubility. So is there a need for enhancing the solubility? Yes, because 40% of the lipophilic drug candidates fail to reach the market. I repeat, 40% of the drugs fail to reach the market and low solubility is very much undesirable. Oral ingestion, that means taking through mouth, it's most convenient and commonly employed route of drug delivery because of its ease of administration and it has very high patient complaints made with old or young and cost effective and least sterility constraints. So sterility is of utmost importance in the pharmaceutical scenario because at the end, 
patient safety is of high importance and flexibility in the design of a dosage form. As a result, many of the drug companies are very much inclined to produce bioequivalent oral drug products, bioequivalent oral drug products. Hence, there is an, a great need for very much smart technological formulations or approaches in order to make the soluble drugs, in order to make the drugs well soluble and finally well bioavailable. So we can see from this chart about the comparison of the distribution of solubilities for uh, the top 200 oral drug products in the United States, Great Britain, Spain, Japan, and from the WHO essential drug list. And uh, we might have already learned what is solubility. So coming to uh, what is, there are different types of solubilities again, based on the percentage or the amount of the drug being soluble. Very soluble drugs where the solubility is more than one gram per milliliter of the solvent, freely soluble between 100 and 1000 milligrams per ml, soluble 33 to 100 milligrams per ml. So till practically insoluble where the drugs are very much less soluble, even lesser than 0.1 milligrams per ml. So as we discussed, there is a great need of enhancing the solubility. And here we can see various approaches for enhancing the solubility and the dissolution rate of the drugs. These techniques or approaches involve the physical modifications or chemical modifications. So physical modifications include micronizing or nanosizing or forming solid dispersions and modification of the crystal habit like forming polymorphs or amorphous forms and co-crystallization. So recently co-crystals are gaining great importance because of uh, their benefits. And chemical modifications include the formation of salts and formation of inclusion complexes, that is drug cyclodexin inclusion complexes. However, traditional approaches are not successful to the best of their level and suffer from various limitations. For example, the physical instabilities of the solid dispersions on storage or uh, the risk of uh, degradation or stress that is in induced by mechanical stress and also the difficulties in removing the toxic organic solvents. Friends, organic solvents are very much important to form our drugs in the same way. They are very much dangerous or toxic if they are present in the products to a higher level than prescribed. And this is very much difficult in removing the toxic organic solvent. And inclusion complexation of drug molecules with cyclodextrins is one of the most promising approaches that have been recently and extensively used for improving the solubility and dissolution rate of uh, drugs. The schematic shows various common strategies to address low drug solubility. For example, use of co-solvents, formation of salts, uh, use of surfactants or uh, cyclodextrins to form drug cyclodextrin inclusion complexes, reduction of the particle size, as I mentioned before, micronization or nanosizing, and uh, modification of the crystal habit, polymorphs or lipid lipid-based systems, formation of co-crystals and amorphous solid dispersions. These are various common strategies uh, that have been used to address low drug solubility. So as, as the solubility increases, the dissolution rate increases. As the solubility and dissolution properties increase, so there will be a great bioavailability. Coming to our topic, cyclodextrins. <laughs> okay, cy cyclodextrins are cyclic oligosaccharides with a hydrophilic exterior. So it is a hydrophilic exterior with hydrophilic hydroxyl groups and hydrophobic ether groups. So cyclic oligosaccharides with a hydrophilic exterior and a lipophilic central cavity. So this lipophilic interior can harbor or can give a place to a poorly soluble drug while the exterior increases its water solubility. So this is of crucial importance. Cyclodextrins, the interior can harbor a poorly soluble drug while the exterior increases its water solubility. 
and this cyclodextrins consists of alpha 1,4 linked alpha G glucopyranose units. So these, if we can see from the uh, there are from the image on the right, alpha, beta, and gamma cyclodextrins. So these cyclodextrins consist of alpha 1,4 linked alpha D glucopyranose units. And there are several uses of cyclodextrins. For example, to enhance the solubility, dissolution rate, stability, and bioavailability of these drugs, and they're used to reduce the local irritation that is and the bad taste or odor of the drugs. I repeat, cyclodextrins are cyclic oligosaccharides with a hydrophilic exterior and a lipophilic central cavity, and the interior can harbor a poorly soluble drug while the exterior increases or enhances its water solubility. And cyclodextrins are used to increase drug dissolution rate in solid dosage forms. And worldwide, about 30 different pharmaceutical products that contain cyclodextrins are available in the market. And some of the examples are cefotiam hexatil and limoprost complexed with alpha cyclodextrin. And they are available in the tablet form. We can see Pansporin and Opalmon uh, marketed or manufactured by the companies Takeda and Ono in Japan and uh, beta cyclodextrin complexes with benexate or pyroxicam or uh, nimesulide available as capsules or tablets in the different Japanese and European markets and the complexes of uh, various drugs, antifungals like etroconazole or voriconazole with uh, hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin and available in the form of capsules or tablets. And these are various examples. And worldwide, about 30. I think now there are nearly 40 products available because uh, day by day, the importance of cyclodextrins is getting higher and a uh, lot of drug development and the discovery scientists are working to form complexes between these drugs and cyclodextrins. Coming to the history of cyclodextrins. So cyclodextrins were first isolated in 1891 by the French scientist A. Villiers as the degradation products of starch. I repeat, degradation products of starch, and they were originally named as cellulosins. Cellulosins, and the foundations of cyclodextrin chemistry were laid by the Austrian microbiologist, Austrian microbiologist Franz Scardinger, who discovered both alpha and beta cyclodextrins. In the previous slide, I have shown alpha, beta, and gamma cyclodextrins, right? So this great scientist, this Austrian microbiologist, Franz Cardinger, discovered both alpha and beta cyclodextrins between 1903 and 1911. Friends, this is 2020. So it's nearly 117 years, you can see, you can get it dated back. So 1903 and now it's 2020. And later, it was not until 1938, see 1903 and 1911, these were the years for discovering alpha and beta cyclodextrins, but it took 27 more years for Carl Frudenberg to discover gamma cyclodextrin. So these discoveries took between 1903 and 1938. And Frudenberg and his co-workers reported in the late 1930s that Cyclodextrins were cyclic oligosaccharides composed of glucose units. In the earlier slide, I was mentioning the definition of cyclodextrins. They are the cyclic oligosaccharides composed of glucose units. And uh, later, Freud and the same team reported the availability and ability of cyclodextrins to form inclusion complexes in 1948. So friends, 1903, 1911, later 1938, and finally in 1948, these great scientists reported the ability of cyclodextrins to form inclusion complexes. And later in 1976, the world's first natural cyclodextrin containing product, that's the complex of prostaglandin E2 and beta cyclodextrin, available as prostomon ETM sublingual tablets, was marketed in Japan by Ono Pharmaceuticals. And later, Bronson and Mueller and Pita filed patents on the modified cyclodextrins, that's 2-hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin. And in 1992, Stella and Rajevsky patented sulfobutyl ether beta cyclodextrin. Okay, 
so this is not a history lecture and i will not talk more about the dates and years so friends we have heard about alpha beta gamma cyclodextrin i even spoke about modified cyclodextrin so i will go about these techniques or uh, these types in the next slides so as uh, we can see in this slide cyclodextrins and their derivatives of pharmaceutical interest for example alpha beta and gamma these are the natural cyclodextrins and there are various derivatized cyclodextrins for example the true hydroxypropyl alpha cyclodextrin beta cyclodextrin and gamma cyclodextrin and the methyl derivatized form is methyl beta cyclodextrin and dimethyl beta cyclodextrin finally sulfobutyl ether beta cyclodextrin so alpha beta and gamma are the natural cyclodextrins where the remaining are derivatized they are also known as modified cyclodextrins so derivatized or modified cyclodextrins okay now we talk we have talked about cyclodextrins and we have talked about their importance so i will discuss about how the cyclodextrin drug complexes are formed so what are the forces there are various forces responsible for the formation of drug cyclodextrin complexes these involve hydrogen bonding van der waals interactions release of conformational strain and exclusion i repeat exclusion of high energy water bonds in the cyclodextrin cavity friends don't worry i'm not going to teach you any chemistry i'm not going to talk about any more van der waals interactions but i would just wanted i just wanted to introduce various forces so these are the forces hydrogen bonding van der waals forces and the conformational strain release and exclusion of high energy water bonds in the cyclodextrin cavity these are very much important forces responsible for the formation of drug and cyclodextrin complexes coming to the aqueous so in the aqueous solution the cyclodextrin cavity contains polar water molecules cyclodextrin cavity contains polar water molecules that are readily exchanged for the non polar hydrophobic guest molecules so i repeat that polar water molecules are readily exchanged with the non polar hydrophobic guest molecules so the water molecules situated inside the non polar environment of the cyclodextrin cavity do not have a full complement of hydrogen bonds and are higher in energy than the water molecules that are outside the cyclodextrin hence liberating the water molecules that are enthalpy rich high in energy is a driving force for the complexation okay again if i can find the terms enthalpy and energy but okay i will discuss them later so sterically the size and certain fun functional groups of the guest molecule determine the ability of the guest to fit into cyclodextrin cavity and as mentioned earlier cyclodextrins enhance the drug solubility so how do they enhance the solubility the cylindrical structure or shape of the cyclodextrins allow the guest molecule that is the drug so here this is called the drug host guest host chemistry the drug to be kept within the hydrophobic interior while the exterior is hydrophilic and soluble in the aqueous solution so this complex improves the drug solubility and finally the bioavailability of insoluble drugs and there are various drugs that are the examples where the cyclodextrin enhanced apparent drug solubility and dissolution rate have proven to be clinically useful and we can see the complexes of alpha cyclodextrin and projequantel and uh, the use of beta cyclodextrin to enhance the solubility of uh, various drugs uh, like nimesulide or lorazepam or piroxicam or praziquantel and uh, gamma cyclodextrin to enhance the solubility of omeprazole or digoxin and uh, the modified cyclodextrins to enhance the solubility of various antifungal or antihypertensive or non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs so these are various examples where the cyclodextrin enhances the drug solubility and dissolution rate have proven to be clinically useful okay we spoke about what are the drug cyclodextrin complexes or how are they formed and now i will take you to through the processes used in the preparation of the drug cyclodextrin inclusion complexes so drug cyclodextrin inclusion complexes that form part of a solution are prepared by adding solid drug to an aqueous solution so i repeat it 
So complexes in the solution are prepared by adding quantities of the solid drug to the aqueous solution to water whilst continuously stirring at ambient temperature. So I can just show you one small image where it will be useful. So the drug and the cyclodextrin. So the drugs are added to the aqueous solutions of the cyclodextrins while they're continuously stirred at ambient temperature. And the increase in apparent solubility results, and this can be used to make useful medicines from poorly water soluble drugs. And coming to the inclusion complexes in the solid state, these are prepared using various processes that include that physical blending or physical mixing, kneading, milling or co-grinding, solvent evaporation, freeze drying, spray drying, microwave irradiation, and supercritical fluid processing. So I repeat, there are various preparatory techniques to form a solid state inclusion complexes. These include physical mixing, kneading, milling or co-grinding, solvent evaporation, freeze drying, spray drying, microwave irradiation, and supercritical fluid processing. Friends, I would like to discuss a case study on which my team and I have worked. So this is about econosol cyclodextrin complexes. So these, till now we discussed the theory, but now I would like to take you through a case study. So econosol is an imidazole antifungal drug that is used or indicated in the treatment of mycotic infections. And it suffers from a very poor aqueous solubility that's about three to five micrograms per milliliter at 25 degrees Celsius. Friends, I repeat, it is three to five micrograms per ml. So it's very poorly aqueous soluble and, and has poor dissolution rate. Hence, we chose Econozole as a suitable modif model drug to study the formation of drug cyclodextrin complexes in the solid state. And we used alpha and beta cyclodextrins for the present study. And as you can see in the below image, it shows the molecular model that shows econozole. So this is the drug econozole getting docked into alpha and beta cyclodextrins. So we discussed about how this, the complexes of drug and cyclodextrin are formed in solvent and later also in the solid state. Now I'll show you how the, these complexes were prepared for econozole and cyclodextrin. We used different techniques out of which first one was a physical blending or physical mixture where the drug and cyclodextrin were mixed in a tumble mixer for 15 minutes. Just the drug and cyclodextrin to be added to the blender or a tumble mixer and blended for 15 minutes. And that's, that gives us the physical mixture. So we can just see the drug and cyclodextrin as a physical mixture. And the next one was freeze drying. In this freeze drying, we use the aqueous solutions of uh, econzole and okay, the drug and cyclodextrin, and this was stirred for 48 hours. Friends, these 48 hours are this temperature and time. These are for this particular study, but in in general, freeze drying is formed when the drugs and cyclodextrin aqueous solutions are stirred to form clear solution, and they are frozen till certain desirable temperature may be minus 20 or different temperatures, and finally dried in a freeze dryer for a desired time period. In this case, we had to dry it for 72 hours for getting the best dried product. So once the freeze dried product is available, this was homogenized in a motor using the motor and bezel. So we can see the below image. So this forms a complex of the drug into the encyclodextrin. And later, we employed supercritical fluid technology. That's a supercritical carbon dioxide processing for forming of complexes. So what's supercritical fluid? It's a substance at a temperature and pressure above its critical point. I repeat, substance at a temperature and pressure above its critical point where the distant liquid and gas phases do not ex exist. So friends, we know that there are three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. But this is a different phase where the liquid and gas phases do not exist. And these exist at above the critical point. 
Okay, what is critical temperature? The temperature above which a substance can no longer exist as a liquid, no matter how much pressure is applied. And critical pressure, this is the pressure above which a substance can no longer exist as a gas, no matter how much temperature is applied. So friends, critical temperature and pressure are very much important. Okay, supercritical fluids, as I mentioned, I'll just show you. So below the critical parameters, two distinct phases exist. And as the temperature rises, the liquid expands and the two phases become less distinct, forming a new supercritical phase. And as the system is cooled, again, the reverse phase occurs and the phase separation to liquid and vapor exist. I'll repeat this again. Below the critical parameters, two distinct phases exist. And supercritical fluids are suitable as a substitute for organic solvents. Friends, I think our lecturers or teachers might have told what are organic solvents and how they would be toxic and what are grass solvents generally regarded as solvent or as safe solvents. And uh, so supercritical fluids are suitable as a substitute for organic solvents. And uh, the benefit is that they can diffuse through solids like a gas and can dissolve materials like a liquid. So see, friends. Supercritical fluids can diffuse through solids like a gas and dissolve materials like a liquid. So they have the properties of both gas and liquid. Okay, why supercritical carbon dioxide? Okay, supercritical carbon dioxide has been used as it's universally accepted as a friendly, green and fully recyclable solvent. And it has a low critical temperature of 304.25 Kelvin and 73.9 bar pressure. So the low critical temperature makes it very much attractive for processing heat labile molecules. And the supercritical carbon dioxide is non-flammable, non-toxic, inexpensive, and no shear stress. So these are the benefits, non-flammable, non-toxic, less expensive or inexpensive, and no shear stress. So why don't you go green? <laughs> Okay, so earlier I mentioned how the physical mixed complexes or uh, physical mixtures were prepared later, how freeze dried mixtures were prepared. And in the supercritical fluid processing, how the complexes were prepared. Okay, I can show the schematics of this supercritical fluid processor first. We can see the carbon dioxide cylinder from where the carbon dioxide is passed through the cooling unit at nearly, at, uh, nearly four degrees Celsius and later pass it through a carbon dioxide pump which pumps the carbon dioxide and it passes through the reaction vessel and we can see the sample kept in the reaction vessel and later the temperature and pressure controlled by the controllers and finally the back pressure is regulated by automated back pressure regulator so this is a simple schematic of uh, the supercritical fluid processor and what we have done in the study was that so we placed the physical mixture of uh, the drug and cyclodextrin in the sam sample reaction vessel, the cell, we can see that. And uh, later it was subjected by passing the carbon dioxide at uh, 200 bar and 333 Kelvin at three hours. And later the mixture was depressurized to the atmospheric pressure. So first we subjected it to carbon dioxide processing at 200 bar pressure and 333 degrees Kelvin and finally depressurized to atmospheric pressure. Finally, the product was then homogenized or ground in a motor using motor and pencil. Okay, there are various techniques that are used to work or to analyze the drug cyclodextrin complexes. So that those include the scanning electron microscopy, differential scanning calorimetry, thermogrammetric analysis, UV or uh, HPLC techniques for uh, studying the solubility and uh, phase solubility and uh, drug dissolution studies, and uh, powder X-ray diffractogram, uh, diffractometry, XRD, 
for uh, checking or studying the crystallinity of the drugs and other techniques like infrared spectroscopy or FTIR spectroscopy for uh, checking to analyze the interactions, the level of interactions between the drug and cyclodextrins. So what is scanning electron microscopy? So in this, a scanning electron microscope, SEM, is used. This is, a electron, this is an electron microscope that produces images of a sample by scanning it with a focused beam of electrons. So, so the images are produced, of, images of a sample are produced by scanning the sample with a focused beam of electrons. And SEM reveals information about the sample. For example, they can tell about the texture or external morphology, chemical composition, crystalline structure, and orientation of materials that make up the sample. In the earlier study, so after preparing the complexes of uh, econozole with the cyclodextrin, that's alpha cyclodextrin using the physical mixing and the freeze drying and supercritical carbon dioxide, later we started analyzing them. So the first test was uh, the scanning electron microscopy, and we can see the photomicrographs of econozole and econozole alpha cyclodextrin systems. Friends, you can see that econozole, as mentioned in the first image, it was very crystalline and alpha cyclodextrin is crystalline too. And the samples were made electrically conductive by coating in vacuum with the chromium at 300 amstroms. And uh, uh, we can see the photomicrographs of the physical mixture where we can clearly see the drug and cyclodextrin as the uh, mixtures. And later freeze drying shows a glassy shard or different aspects of uh, uh, the drug and cyclodextrin. We cannot see any more crystalline particles. And finally, the supercritical uh, photomicrograph of the su supercritically processed powder, we can see that it's just an aggregation of the drug and cyclodextrin. So it has become completely amorphous. And we can see a new morphology can be observed in the freeze dried and supercritical samples. The next technique is a differential scanning calorimetry. And this is a fundamental tool in the thermal analysis of uh, the drug cyclodextrin complexes. And how this works, the principle is that the difference in the amount of heat that's required to increase the temperature of a sample and reference is measured as a function of temperature. Friends, I repeat, this is the principle is that the difference in the amount of heat that is required to increase the temperature of a sample and the reference is measured as a function of temperature. And differential, differential scanning calorimetry can detect any change that alters the heat flow in and out of a sample. And we can find or we can study the solid state transitions melting and conversions of different crystalline phases, crystallization, degradation, and loss of solvents by using this technique. So the image shows that the D differential scanning calorimetry thermograms of econozole alpha cyclodextrin and econozole alpha cyclodextrin systems. And in this study, we used five milligrams of the samples and the heating rate was five degrees Celsius per minute was employed. And as we can see from the image, econozole has a sharp melting point between 80 and 90 degrees Celsius. And uh, later we can see uh, the transitions of alpha cyclodextrin. So the physical mixture is, as we can see, as we have discussed earlier, physical mixture just involves the mixture of drug and cyclodextrin that's blending just the physical components in a tumbled mixer or a blender. So we can clearly see the structure of a drug and the cyclodextrin in this physical mixture thermogram. And coming to the freeze dried thermogram, we can see the peak of uh, the crystalline peak of the drug, the melting point peak has uh, diminished to a lower level. And finally, in the supercritical, we can see that the intensity is completely disappeared. So disappearance or decrease in the intensity of the drug endothermic peak might be related to possible drug cyclodextrin interactions or the loss of drug crystallinity. I repeat, friends, disappearance or decrease in the intensity of the drug endothermic peak might be related to possible drug cyclodextrin interactions 
and loss of drug crystallinity. Coming to the third technique, that is powder X-ray diffractometry or X-ray powder diffraction analysis. So XRD, it's a rapid and non-destructive analytical technique and primarily used for the phase identification of the crystalline material and for the information on unit cell dimensions and for determination of crystal structures. Friends, I'm not going deeper to discuss all these analytical techniques. And I think when we have time, we can arrange some other session to discuss these analytical techniques or uh, the science behind the drug cyclodextrin complexation. Because uh, as I mentioned, it's 120 years history and 120 years of work. We cannot just discuss in these 45 minutes of one hour, right? <laughs> so, okay, so I can discuss, I will try to discuss as much as possible. And XRD is primarily used for determination of the crystal structures and uh, it provides information about the structure of the underlying material, whether it exhibits long range order as in crystalline materials or short range order as in glassy or amorphous materials. Friends, it provides information about the structure of the underlying material. So may it be the long range order as in crystalline materials or short range order as in amorphous materials. So this slide shows the X-ray powder diffractograms of our drug econazole and alpha cyclodextrin. And from the diffractogram, we can see that there are sharp crystalline peaks, sharp peaks of econazole, which just tell that the drug is very much crystalline. And uh, we have seen um, the scanning electron photomicrographs of econazole earlier, isn't it? So in the previous slide, we can see, we have shown that econozole is highly crystalline. And in the same way, alpha cyclodextrin is highly crystalline and physical mixture has a mixture of these both components. So we can see all the crystalline pieces. Whereas freeze dried showed glassy shards and supercritical showed aggregates or amorphous dispersions, right? Okay. So in this image, we can see Econozole showed displayed sharp peaks mentioning that the drug is highly crystalline and the same with alpha cyclodextrin, which showed sharp peaks uh, confirming its crystalline structure. And physical mixture, this is just a superimposition of uh, drug and cyclodextrin. As we can see, this is just a superimposition of uh, the diffractograms of Econozole and alpha cyclodextrin. And, uh, in this, in the photomicrographs, we have seen that there were some glassy shards that were formed for the freeze dried complexes. And here we can see the intensity got very much lesser and many of the crystalline characteristic peaks of uh, econozole and the cyclodextrin got diminished here with a very lesser intensity. And finally, in the supercritical systems, we can just see amorphous halos, just two halos. So we can see that that, and from these images, we can see the degree of crystallinity is very much higher for physical mixed products when compared to the freeze dried and finally to the supercritically processed products. And we can infer that the reductions in peak intensity and disappearance of peaks. So I repeat here reduction in the peak intensity and the disappearance of peaks are a complete diffuse pattern as shown for the supercritical products. This might be related to possible drug amorphization or complexation. I hope the image is clear. And uh, we also employed a nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy. Friends, this is a bigger, great research technique that's getting greater importance nowadays. And uh, this NMR is a new research technique that exploits the magnetic properties. A highlight, it's the magnetic properties of the certain atomic nuclei. And NMR determines the physical and chemical properties of atoms or the molecules in which they are contained. And uh, NMR studies may be done in the solution state or in the solid state. In the solution state, the solution state NMR helps us to measure the dissociation constants and also to determine the stoichiometry. So the stoichiometry infers here how well, that means what is the ratio in which the drug and cyclodextrin got included? For example, is it one is to one ratio of drug and cyclodextrin or one is to two or two is to one or one is to three or one is to four. So the solution state NMR studies will help us to determine the stoichiometry or the binding ratio of the drug and cyclodextrin. And in the solid state, the NMR studies are helpful to study or to get 
gain a knowledge or information of the chemistry and dynamics of uh, the drugs and complexes, secretion complexes, and to get the information of the structural aspects. And the solid state NMR, it's a non-invasive approach to the molecular analysis. In the solution state NMR, the spectra consists of a series of very sharp transitions. Friends, we can see sharp transitions, right? Due to averaging of anisotropic NMR interactions by rapid random tumbling. I think we can discuss about uh, these NMR techniques or all analytical techniques in the later stages or later lectures. And uh, by contrast, solid state NMR, are the spectra are very broad. See the difference. Here, the spectra are very sharp with sharp transitions. And here we can see broad as the full effects of anisotropic or orientation dependent interactions are observed in the spectrum. We can see sharp transitions in the solution NMR, where broad transitions in the solid state NMR spectra. And in our uh, studies, we used a cross polarization and magic angle spinning solid state 13C NMR spectroscopy. And uh, this technique is a probe of structure at the molecular level. And we used it to gain the interactions uh, to study the structural aspects of uh, these econozole and cyclorexion complexes. And similar to the, so what happened, uh, the benefit of these studies were we were able to gain the information about the crystalline aspects and the structural aspects. And as we can see from uh, this nuclear magneto magnetic resonance spectrum of econozole, and for cyclodextrin and even for the cyclodextrin systems, we could elucidate the degree of crystalline crystallinity that physical mixtures were crystalline or highly crystalline when compared to the freeze-dried and supercritical processed products. And as we can see from the images, the intensity of the sharp peaks started getting diminished with change from physical mixture to the freeze-dried complex to the supercritical dried com uh, complex. And uh, dissolution studies, friends, uh, I just talked about dissolution studies. I mentioned about dissolution studies, but uh, other techniques that are very much useful are solubility studies and phase solubility studies and dissolution studies. These three are very much important as the topic itself is to enhance the solubility and the dissolution rate of polysoluble drugs. And as mentioned earlier, dissolution is it defines the dissolution rate, that is the amount of drug substance that goes into solution per unit time under standardized conditions. And we have gone through this slide earlier. So it provides in vitro drug release information for QC purposes and also for the drug development. And the complexes which we prepared, we tried to establish and to gain information of the dissolution rate. And we, we employed the various temperature conditions at the temperature was 37 plus or minus 0.5 degrees Celsius, and we employed paddle, and uh, the speed was 100 rotations per minute, and uh, we were using an aliquot so for five milliliters. And as we can see from uh, the dissolution rate profile, the so dissolution rate of econosol is very much lesser. It's even lesser than 5% of the drug being released over the time of one hour, that is 60 minutes. and. Uh, physical mixture showed, showed a slightly better dissolution rate. However, the supercritical carbon dioxide processed and freeze dried products showed very great enhanced dissolution rates. And we can see from the image, we were getting about 90% within 60 degrees, even for the alpha cyclodextrins. And uh, we can see that solid drug had lesser dissolution when compared to the physical mixture, later lesser than the freeze dried, and finally lesser than the supercritical carbon dioxide processed product. I'm coming to the summary. The physicochemical properties of the complexes, as mentioned, were evaluated by differential scanning calorimetry, powder X-ray diffractometry, and the scanning electron microscopy, and dissolution studies. And all complexes exhibited a higher apparent econosol dissolution rate than solid drug alone. As I repeat, all the complexes showed better dissolution properties than the drug alone. And we can, see, we can infer that the degree of crystallinity kept on increasing. That means physical mixtures had higher degree of crystallinity when compared to the freeze-dried complex and finally the carbon dioxide processed complexes. And the dissolution rate is reverse. 
So as the degree of crystallinity got increased, the drug dissolution rate got decreased. So the construction of econozole cycloreduction complexes using supercritical carbon dioxide is a highly efficient means to produce pharmaceutical use, pharmaceutically useful solid dispersions. And uh, performance will depend upon the type of cycloreduction used. Friends, in this study, we can see that freeze drying and supercritical carbon dioxide processing showed greater results. So I have worked on different other products, as I mentioned, in, this is about econozole, right? And later I worked on econozole alpha cyclodextrins, econozole beta cyclodextrins, econozole hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin complexes, and econozole methyl beta cyclodextrin complexes. So due to the time constraint, I could not tell you or take you through all these case studies, but I think if time permits, we can do that in the next sessions. And I've worked on some other products that's endomethacin, and I can see that uh, if, if, some, if you're interested in learning more about uh, these complexes, you can uh, refer these uh, publications in the International Journal of Pharmaceutics, uh, the preparation methods, effect of the types of methods, or the influence of the preparation method on the physical chemical properties of endomethacin and methyl beta cyclodextrin complexes. In this uh, paper, I worked on various techniques that include physical mixing, mixing co-evaporation or solvent evaporation, freeze drying and a spray drying and supercritical carbon dioxide processing it's a great paper you can uh, get it online and uh, the next work was the uh, preparation of olanzapin and methyl beta cyclodextrin complexes and uh, yes i used uh, the same techniques so the freeze drying physical mixing co-evaporation and uh, supercritical carbon dioxide processing and uh, later i worked on fluorbiprofen and an inside um, with the methyl beta cyclodextrin complexes and uh, worked on uh, the super supercritical processing. So these are various products and uh, cyclodextrin complexes which I worked into. And uh, if you have, yeah, if you have any doubts on these publications or anything about uh, the thermodynamic aspects or the chemical chemical aspects or how the cyclodextrin and the drug complexes are formed. So what is the chemistry? What are the uses? If uh, any new products are formed, I'm happy to provide you any information and uh, give you any references or publications. I can uh, I can uh, email you the access of these articles. Please feel free to do that. And uh, thank you very much. And I, I would like to thank uh, Professor uh, B. Vijay Kumar, my guru, um, a lot uh, for uh, inviting me. And I dedicate this presentation uh, to Professor B. Vijay Kumar. Thank you. Hi. Now the session is open for the questions. Can you, anyone can post the questions in the chat box. Oh yes, I think uh, there is a question on soluble. Will the solubility of cyclodextrins get affected with the change in pH in, in vivo conditions? Oh uh, yes, uh, definitely. And uh, uh, the solubility of the cyclodextrins affect uh, the soluble that means uh, the solubility of drugs at the various ph and the, the various papers even yesterday i was uh, talking to a student uh, uh, they worked on uh, celecoxib and uh, cyclodextrin complexes and they worked on uh, different ph levels at acidic ph of 1.2 and later they kept on using uh, uh, buffers like phosphate buffer of uh, 6.8 and 7.2 definitely uh, the ph change would definitely would, uh, enhance the solubility and also reduce so at some pro, uh, ph ranges depending on the P, uh, the acidic constraint or basic constraint of the drug for example if it's a basic drug or an acidic drug based on the ph the solubility would definitely get affected yes
Hello. Hello. Sir. Are there any more questions? Another question by Dr. Sir, there is a question here. What is the effect of cyclodextrin on onset of drug action and duration of action of drug and pharmacokinetic parameters? Sorry, the speaker got disconnected. I will wait for a few seconds and see if he can rejoin again. Uh, maybe because of internet uh, interruption, maybe the speaker got disconnected. We will wait for a few seconds. Uh, sir, Suman, sir. Okay, Mr. Shalini, I look. Uh, Mr. Shami, are you able to hear me? This is Ishwar. Sir? Hello, Shami, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, it looks like the Suman got disconnected because of internet uh, interruption. Uh, we will proceed forward, and by the time if he rejoins, we will take on that next question. Okay, sir. Yeah, we will please proceed for the next question. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you, sir, for giving us such a contentful and information and spectacular explanation about the solubility dissolution parameters and how the factors affect the bioavailability and what is the difference between absolute availability and relative bioavailability and what is the importance of biopharmistics classification and various approaches of enhancing solubility and how the organic solvents are important and toxic and difficult to remove, what are the methods involved in that and the strategies to address the low drug solubility and the main topic uh, cyclodextrins and their derivatives the inclusion complexes how the complex are formed and uh, preparation of solid state inclusion complexes and different techniques used for preparation and the method supercritical fluid technology and use of supercritical carbon dioxide and its side effects or uses and how to analyze the cyclodextrins such a beautiful information has given by you, sir. Thank you so much. Oh, I request Dr. K. Madhavi, ma'am, to continue the session. Over to Madhavi, ma'am. Good morning. I'm Dr. Madhavi, Associate Professor in Care College of Pharmacy. Thank, thank you for being here. Hope everyone enjoyed the first session by Dr. Suman Rudrangi about drug cyclodextrin and its solubility. First session was very engaging and interesting. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, just watch, we'll watch a video for two minutes.
Today we are pleased to welcome our second speaker, Dr. Ganesh Basit, a very special guest from Nasik. Hello. At present, say good morning, sir. A hearty welcome, sir. Uh, and he's a special guest from Nasik. At present, he is a professor and head of pharmaceutics department in SNJB Sriman Suresh Dada Jain College of Pharmacy, Nasi. He's a his doctorate from Nagpur University and done his MPhil in Bits Pilani, and graduated from Kakatiya University, and has good industrial experience in different departments from production chemist to manager. He scaled up about hundred pharmaceutical dosage forms. And he is FDA approved manufacturing technical staff in tablets and capsules and creams, and approved full time professor in Pune University. And today he will be sharing with us his expert opinion on the microbial drug delivery system. And now I request Dr. Ganesh Basarkar to talk to start the talk. Okay, is it I'm audible? Yes, sir. Okay, is it I'm clearly audible to all of you? Yes, sir. It is audible, sir. Hello. Okay. Sir, are you able to hear okay. me? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm able to hear, but uh, somewhere the voice is cutting. Yeah, it's okay, sir. From your at your end, it looks like the internet actually is somewhat be closer. Uh, okay. We will see. Okay. Sir, will you okay, please but... uh, is your PPT open in other open other window, sir? Is your PowerPoint presentation open? Open. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, one minute. Yes, sir. Yeah, it is now open. Yes, sir. Please come back to this uh, browser. Share? Yeah, at the bottom there is a share screen okay. option, sir. Please come back. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Share. In that you select application windows. There are options like entire screen and application share, share. window. Please select application window. Please select window or screen. Application window. Yes. Good. In the application window, you can see the PowerPoint thumbnails. Here. Please select share screen, sir. Then you select allow. You will ask for access. You will allow the access. No, there are uh, screen sharing tips. S screen sharing in easiest with two monitors. Yeah. Screen sharing the bottom, with good computer. Uh, at the bottom, you select that uh, share access. Uh, yes, sir. Share. Share screen. Now it will. Uh, yes, sir. Share screen. It will, okay. yeah. it will give you three options: entire screen, application window, browser window. Right no, it is. What it is saying, sir? No, no, I am not able to. No, it's it is not okay. giving anything. Uh, your browser has blocked your screen. Your? Your, your screen blocked your screen. 
blocked. Your browser has blocked your screen. Click the screen icon in your address bar to allow access. Okay, you just see, sir. In your laptop, there are some restrictions. It seems in the address bar, you please check it, sir. Uh, is there any restriction? Block. Yeah, share screen block temporarily. Ah, uh, you just allow that one. If yeah, you yeah, that, we are doing. Hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Now again, you try the same process on the bottom of the windows. At the bottom, you can see share screen. Just now try it again. Share screen. Entire screen. No, no. Oh, you can see entire screen also. Yeah, yeah. Now it is. Yeah. Now it's open. Okay. okay. Yeah, fine, sir. Perfect. Ah, yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. No, it is perfect. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can go to the section and start your presentation. Before that, if you want to say anything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let, 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 let me start. Sure. So, Thank very you. good afternoon, all of you. Very good afternoon to the honorable management of care college of pharmacy respected principals dear colleagues as well as then my dear students let me congratulate all of you for arranging such a wonderful event that is an international webinar on pharmaceutical sciences in fact the need of the days because presently the COVID-19 pandemic has left no country untouched. It has humbled all of us. No, it has disrupted all of our lives. In spite of this, the human beings and especially the pharmaceutical scientists and colleagues like you and encouraging and budding pharmacists and talented professors and the faculty has never left a back foot and they are arranging the conferences as well as the seminars like this really hats off to you while arranging for this type of the, this one so let me congratulate once again so the my as a very good introduction by dr madhavi thank you madhavi dr madhavi for giving such a wonderful uh, introduction about me as i just said myself Dr. Ganesh Basarkar, I am working as a professor and taking care of the pharmaceutical department at Sriman Suresh Dadajain College of Pharmacy. And I am proud to be <clears throat> alumni of Kakatiya University in the 85 and 88 batch. Now, as I said, I am proud to be the pharmacist because no one knows more about medicine than the pharmacist. We are considered as a Brahmas of the pharmaceutical scientist. We are the Brahmas of the existing drugs, whatever the available. We feel very proud when we go to the medical shops or the druggist, when we feel doubt that one of my colleague has discovered this, formulated this, marketed this and everything. That's what I'm saying. It is in Brahma. So that's what I'm very proud to be the pharmacist of this one. Now, what my today topic covers as we are going through the COVID-19 pandemic situations, so I have deliberately selected this type of the topic that is microbial drug delivery system and overview. So what's my content and agenda will see a brief introduction. Then we feel why this microbes as a drug delivery system when there are the lot of conventional drug delivery systems are available. That what is the fun? What is why we are going for the microbial drug delivery systems? Then obviously when we are formulating any drug delivery systems, we have to see, we have to highlight what are the advantages as well as the disadvantages because finally it has to hit the market. Finally, it has to reach the patients. Finally, the patients are the ultimate customers for them. So what are the advantages? And then in brief, which are the examples for the bacteria used as a drug delivery system, virus and the conclusion and way forward. 
no i think the most of the audience and the spectators are maybe post graduate and the degree final year students just going back through this one there are the different type of the microorganisms i think we might have studied in the second year of our beef pharmacy that is bacteria virus fungi algae as well as an so we feel most of the time we feel there is a and the dangerous material as you seen that's when corona virus we feel that are this is a virus which is a dangerous we should not go bacteria which is dangerous fungi which is very dangerous algae this is so we consider why these are the useful for us now let me <clears throat> give the briefly about this one what are the benefits not only they are the hazardous they are totally they are the danger but the few of the bacteria or the virus they are the helpful for this one that is they improve the bowel movement they produce the beneficial effect and they prevent harmful bacteria they are the used as the probiotics right they aid in the digestion as well as this one nevertheless these are the general benefits of this one <clears throat> now as a pharmaceutical scientist we know these are the conventional drug delivery system whenever the drug is discovered or the drug is synthesized the very first drug delivery system it comes to the mind of the pharmaceutical scientist is oral drug delivery system these are the few couple of conventional drug delivery systems so that is oral buccal rectal intravenous subcutaneous etc etc i have not mentioned but these are the few of the conventional we know whenever the pharmaceutical scientist go we want to Uh, we want to formulate this type of the pharmaceutical dosage forms hello now <clears throat> having said that one a brief introduction that is around 70% of the global deaths are generally caused by the communicable diseases like <laughs> cancer and cardiovascular diseases to take up this more than a decade our pharmaceutical researchers our colleagues and the seniors they are endeavor to develop an effective safe and targeted specific drug delivery systems to tackle this mm -hmm. the conventional drug therapy that is we know the tablets and the capsules are the uses to treat the manage the life threatening and infectious disease but they we know there are certain limitations are there are certain unmet medical needs even though they are available in the market but there are certain unmet medical needs are available. so that is the encouraging factor for the going for the microbial or the novel drug delivery systems so to overcome this type of the undesirable effects now the scientists have been working more effective because i said pharmaceutical scientists never sit alone they always wanted to do something different from the others they always wanted to take the challenges so always they go for the novel drug delivery systems and microbe based drug delivery systems and advancement of the gene delivery systems so why this the microbe based drug delivery systems they, they are the safe non toxic and side specific looking for this one because of the some side effects of the conventional drug delivery now what makes the microorganisms why they are concentrating on this so the properties certain characteristics of the microorganisms like self propulsion in a particular fluid in situ production of the therapeutics penetration into the diseased cells especially the tumor cells most of the global pharmaceutical scientists are presently working on this tumor cells and increased immunity where we are talking about during the covid pandemic situations that is increase your immunity increase in your immunity so these are the areas where there are the interest for the development of highly effective drug delivery systems especially for the couriers now not only the pure microorganisms there are certain side effects or the adverse actions maybe with the pure microbes so to avoid this genetically modified microorganisms especially the bacteria virus these are the novel approaches they are the used in the fields of healthcare environmental so these bio engineered microorganisms are found to be very much interesting for the healthcare because of the more efficacious as well as the targeted drug delivery system conventional con compared to the conventional uh, approaches the classic example is one of the USA abdur therapeutics that is lutstura 
this is genetically modified virus for the treatment of retinal dystrophy so the research on genetically modified microbes will be the cost effective alternative for the conventional methods in near future in the next generation this type of the drug delivery systems we are the going this one just like artificial intelligence is breaking through similarly the genetically modified drug delivery systems are this one this is one of the examples which is the us fda uh, one of the uh, uh, from the genetically modified adenovirus rp 65 gene which is responsible for this so this is extracted from the virus now before going to the what is the bacterial drug delivery system let us look how what is the structure of the bacteria we know these are the essential structures are the particular structures cell wall cell membrane cytoplasm nuclear membrane capsule flagella and pila as well as the spores now earlier what we were studying in the microbiology for our students only the structure of the bacteria what are the staining how it is they are identified this one now the microbiological scientist has tied up with the pharmaceutical scientist as a multidisciplinary functions like how can we utilize these particular structures especially the capsules flagella as well as the pilla as well as the spores from this bacteria are the structures of the how can we utilize as a drug delivery systems so that that will be beneficial to the society as well as the pharmaceutical world now why why this when there are so many conventional drug delivery systems are available then why it is always keep it in mind why these microbial drug delivery systems are there there are certain characteristics of certain bacteria which makes them as a next genera for the drug delivery systems are the vectors are the vehicles for the drug delivery systems i would like to highlight here there are two nigerian research scholars are working under me and we are working on this bacterial drug delivery systems we have isolated secondary metabolite from one of the bacteria and we are doing specific drug delivery systems so far we have achieved only the uh, isolation of this metabolite from the bacteria and now we are in the process of Uh, screening anti anti cancer screening effects we are identifying and once we get the positive results we may go any one of this one so what makes this bacteria first is mobility of the bacteria production of the specific proteins on the site bacteriophagy stimuli response bacteria which may be light sensitive or light generated transcription magnetically oxygen driven thermo or ph sensitive drug delivery systems so all these because of this certain characteristics which makes the bacteria or the microbes as an ideal agent for the drug delivery systems now why this we know the bacteria the moments takes place because of the specific organs like flagella as well as the pillai and when this bacteria that is mobility of this bacteria towards a particular gradient whether you can say the light gradient or the magnesium or the chemical or the oxygen gradient and such type of the bacteria they termed as an bacterial ta taxis they termed as a taxis because they are the locomotive organs and they will travel they will travel to the particular site so the different cases of the bacteria show the various taxis before the different bacteria we have the different taxis not all the type of the bacteria certain type of the bacteria will have this one listeria bacteria may have the uh, light sensitive clostridium bacteria may have certain type of the magnetic this one such type of the we have to identify such type of the bacteria and we have to evaluate we have to generate and this bacteria can be utilized to reach the target so that we can have the targeted drug delivery systems so such characteristic of the bacteria they move towards the specific site unlike normal cells cancer cells are altered chemical compositions that tumor cells are deficient may be some of the oxygen that is hypoxic conditions may be there some of the chemical modifications might have taking place some of the structural so these chemical because of this chemical changes because of this affected areas these bacterial taxis will move to that particular area and they release the drug at the site similarly the production of the specific proteins at the targeted site 
because of this bacterial toxins and because of the endotoxins or whether the exotoxins which are the produced by the bacteria we can incorporate a particular type of the proteins and they will allow them to release at the site of this one the third part which is more quite interesting is bactofaction this is the process of introducing the naked purified nucleic acids into the eukaryotic cells that is known as an bactofaction so this process of the bactofaction is utilized to incorporate particular type of the proteins as well as the nucleic acids and they will transferred or absorbed or absorbed into the mammalian cells where the tumor cells are there example of this one bifidobacterium was this is if you can modify or engineered bio engineered they will deliver the gene cells when they are encoded with this one or incorporated they will deliver particular type of the cells similarly long arm similarly infantis herpes simplex virus they are also reported to have the anti tumor effect in the mice and friends all these are not there in the market as on today only the research is going on especially in the european countries as well as in americans where they are either in the phase 1 clinical trials or phase 2 clinical trials right so these are the few ways that are research is going on similarly the one of the best ways is to incorporate the vaccination for the dna similarly dna vaccines are delivered to the macrophages by the certain bacterial species like listeria monocytogenes and listeria typhoidium similarly it is also bio engineered with the e coli escherichia coli to use in the breast cancers that is similar to this stimuli response the bacteria as i said mentioned the particularly the uh, cell the diseased cell tumor cells which may be lacking because of the hypoxia with the lack of oxygen bacteria shows the capability to react with the various stimulus like chemical changes if we can modify the ph at the surrounding sites or we can introduce if the light like magnetic radiation or the ultraviolet rays or certain type of the rays similarly the temperature changes so if we make these the changes at the site so the bacteria because of this taxis they will travel and the release similarly the light sensitive if we can make the site as a more light sensitive by giving the some of the light of in, introduction of the light this may be connected this one so these are the few examples like stimuli response as well as the light response similar to the magnetically response certain bacteria synchronize in earth magnetic field in the presence of the magnetic nano crystals so in presence of the magnetic resonance imaging the bacteria may be located and they can monitored beneath the impact of the magnetic and they will release this one similarly oxygen driven targeting since the bacterial uh, since the cancer cells bearing the oxygen deficient conditions the anaerobic bacteria like clostridium and streptococcus they target the tumor cells and they are modified to transport the immunostimulant proteins to upgrading il2 interleukins to facilitate the anti cancer activity so these are the various ways how can we utilize similarly thermo and ph response delivery adherence of serata markers species bacteria sorry for the interruption sir okay are, are we following the slide sir are you Not continuing it? are you following with the slide sir slide powerpoint i am not able to yeah powerpoint slide is not in a slide show mode sir will you please keep it in slide show powerpoint now it is the 19 slide sir the slides are not moving here no but what what you are facing the i am i am doing the 19th slide it is with me what what you are facing is showing which slide you are having slides are, slides are not moving it is still in the first slide only because i thought that you are saying orally about the lecture will you please keep it in f slide is it in slide show mode yeah it is you are not able to see slide show No sir, uh, it is in static mode only. Uh, we thought that you are giving oral explanation. No, 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 no. No, no. From starting only, this is the problem. Ah, yes, sir. As well in the so floor, we able... No, no, no. But you are not able to see not a single slide. Ah, slides we are able to see, but as a small, small image is only. Will you please share it again, sir? Will you please share the screen once again? Okay. Try over. Let me know. Slide show. Ah, this is the. Ah, no, yet. 
Halo. Ah. Give it in slide show more, sir. Slide show more. Slide show more. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. Otherwise, you click yeah, five. Ah, now it is okay. Uh, it is still in thumbnail only, sir. Uh, I am waiting. Uh, is it in slide, full slide mode? Yeah, it is a full slide mode now. For us, it is coming like a small view only, sir. Small thumbnail view is only available to us. We will do one thing, sir. Once please close it and open it again, sir. At the bottom, once pl please click the stop screen, sir. Once and again, we will do it again. At the bottom, you click stop screen in the browser, stop. in the software browser. Stop. Okay, stop sharing. Okay. Ah, once again, you do it again. Sir. Please try it again. Okay, share screen. PowerPoint. Ah, it is shared, is it? I am checking. Now, please keep it in slideshow mode, sir. Full screen mode. It is in slideshow mode. It, it is slideshow mode only. Okay, sir. While sharing the screen, what is the option you are selecting, sir? Entire screen or application window? Uh, when we click the share screen option, it is giving you two options: right? entire screen or slide uh, application window like that. Okay, just wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, no problems. Uh, once again, you go to share screen. Yeah, right. Share screen. Oh, now uh, it is giving three options: no entire screen, application window, browser window. Is that right? In, in a window, no, it, is uh, it is showing. No, no, it is it is going. It is giving either uh, my Microsoft PowerPoint and entire screen, and uh, Firefox sharing indicator. Sir, you please select entire screen. That's entire true. screen. Okay, we have selected same thing. Ah, uh, entire screen uh, and allow. Ah, okay. Sir. Hello. Okay, so we are doing same thing. Ah, now you please go to PowerPoint, sir. One second. Once you close the PowerPoint and reopen, okay. sir. Okay. Once you please close the PPT and we will reopen it again. We will try, sir. One second. Okay. And open it again, sir. Okay. Okay. We are opening. Ah, no issues. Sorry for the trouble, sir. Ah, some, maybe some technical issue in computer. Now, please keep it in slideshow mode. No. Yeah, perfect, sir. Now it's Is it okay fine, now? sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's working now properly. Now, shall I move? Yes, sir. You just continue my. Yeah, you can continue, sir. You can continue. No, I was on the slide number 19. Yeah, you, you just slowly pass these starting slides and you can continue from 19 slides. Okay, 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 okay. okay. What I will do is leave this one. Yeah. Okay. From uh, from first slides, you are not able to see. Ah yes, sir. Uh, we are able to see only small thumbnail views. Maybe some issue with the PowerPoint uh, uh, say version in your computer, sir. It's okay, sir. Uh, just okay. show the slides at glance, and you can continue, sir. Charting slides, no, just okay. show at glance. Ah. Now it is a third. Now it is a third slide. Are you able to see that is yeah. the contents? Yes, sir. Contents, right, sir. 
yeah 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 if, if please stop me whenever you are not comfortable there is no problem with yeah, yeah. me thank you. okay thank so you, these sir. are the thank my concepts sure. of this one i was explaining yeah. the introduction yeah. why microbial drug delivery advantages and the bacteria and this one so these are the type of the microorganisms where i have discussed bacteria and the fungi and this one so we always know that there are the hazards which are the available with the dangerous things that are available with the microorganism but we there are certain benefits are also microorganisms with this one these are the explained in this slide and as a pharmaceutical scientist uh, we always go for the conventional drug delivery systems and a couple of conventional these are this one because a pharmaceutical scientist is always fascinated toward the oral drug delivery system first and then next come to the uh, syrups and this one so uh, listing down some of this one which is not included completely so i was explaining the, the introduction part there are certain conventional drug delivery systems are available still they are available in the market but there are certain unmet medical needs are there to treat for the non communicable disease like this cancer and the cardiovascular uh, this one so to overcome this undesirable effects the pharmaceutical scientists are always they are endeavoring to effective as well as an alternative systems as well as the novel drug delivery systems then we go for the nanoparticles then everything so one of the drug delivery system to come back is this one microbial based drug delivery systems are also there now what makes this microbes as a uh, drug delivery systems there are certain characteristic because we always think self propulsion in situ production of the therapeutics penetration into the tumor cells increase in the immunity so all these characteristics of the microbes which makes more interesting part for the development of the drug delivery system for the pharmaceutical scientist now in addition to the pure flora of this one microbes we found certain if they can modify genetically modified microorganisms and especially the bacteria and this one scientists found that they are the more efficacious and the more targeted drug delivery system can be approved and one of the us fda approved this is an example is a lucutura uses these are the genetically modified virus for the treatment of the retinal dystrophy there are the various disciplines we are working irritable bowel syndrome gastrointestinal disorders as well as the cancers as well, there are all this is the areas where the pharmaceutical scientists are the working now this is an example for this one natural form of the adenovirus that is genetically manipulated that is express rp16 genes which is responsible for the treatment which is the us fda approved now we know <clears throat> the structure base, basic structure of this one so why can't we utilize we study the bacteria in short what are the various type of the bacteria what are the staining activities what are the disease causing activities how can we isolate this one but the multidisciplinary functions will work all over the globe how can we utilize this part of this bacteria as a drug delivery systems like capsules as well as than flagella as well as than pilla as well as than spores no it is always brainstorming session why this is could be used why this bacteria should be used when there are n number of the conventional drug delivery systems are available market all over the globe then why should we go when there are certain there are certain characteristics like mobility of the bacteria production lactofaction stimuli light sensitive these are the few characteristic properties of the bacteria which makes which can be explored as a drug delivery systems for the various therapeutic areas now the what is mobility we call them as an taxis bacterial taxis these bacteria because of certain organs like flagella as well as an pili which makes them to move to a particular environment and especially if we consider the cancerous cells the tumor cells the cells surrounding the environment may be deficient in one of the maybe they are the deficient in the oxygen maybe deficient in one of the chemicals lacking maybe deficient in one of the proteins they may be lacking in some of the things so if we can identify it and we can make this bacteria to attack this particular areas by using maybe where the oxygen gradient is there by using the photosensitive this one so different type of the bacterias like listeria clostridium different genes of the genus of the bacteria will act they will be utilized so we have to explore this type of the bacteria to move that particular cell by using a effective drug delivery systems 
Now, similarly, the proteins by delivering a particular type of the proteins at the type at the targeted sites, the exotoxins as well the endo exotoxins that are the produced by the gam negative are the distributing at non-specific site. So these are the produced by the bacteria at the on site, and when the drug is loaded in this one, the drug is delivered. Another interesting part is the bactofaction. This is genetic engineering. That is bacterial use deliberately introducing naked or purified nucleic acids into the eukaryotic cells is known as the bactofaction. And this is one of the best method all over the world. Uh, scientists are the utilizing this type of this one. And example for this one is bifidobacterium. This is a herpex simplex. They are utilized this type of the bacteria. Similarly, vaccination of the DNA like Listeria monocytogenesis and Listeria typhomerium. These are the bioengineered with the E. coli so that by utilizing this bactofaction, the drug delivery system can be utilized. Similarly, the stimuli, as I said, the internal organs where there is a disease, where there is a, there is a deficiency. So bacteria shows the capability to react to various stimuli like chemicals or the pH, light, temperature and slight changes in the nearby environment. So they will, when they are introduced into the body, they will identify in the body where there is the changes are there. They move because of the bacterial toxic. So couple of example is the light sensitive. Engineered bacteria revealed high light sensitive ion channels, which allowed control conventional promoter systems. These genetically modified light sensitive ions, a bacterial protein, so that is EL22, a light oxygen voltage. When we identify, when we isolate this and when we incorporate drug into the bacteria by seeing the envelopes as well as the cell membrane and when they introduce into the body, they will travel and the site this one. Similarly, the magnetic response bacteria. When we can stimulate by magnetic resonance imaging, the bacteria may be located and monitored beneath and the influence. Similarly, oxygen driven targeting system because the cells, the diseased cells, the tumor cells may be oxygen deficient conditions. Since most of the cancer cells based oxygen deficient cells, anaerobic bacteria like Clostridium as well as Streptococcus, they target the tumor cells and especially the Clostridium has been modified to transport the immunosuppressant proteins in IL facilities to answer quantity activities. Similarly, as I said, thermo and pH sensitive. And I am glad to share to the participant that this species, adherence of the Ceritaria marxinus, this is one of the best species where all over the world, the microbiological scientists as well as the pharmaceutical scientists are the working on that one. Even two of research scientists from the Nigeria who are working under me at SNJB College of Pharmacy, Sandward, we have isolated a secondary metabolite from this and we have um, we, uh, we have isolated a secondary metabolite and we have sent for the anti-cancer screening activity this one so once the results are come once we are expecting the results within a couple of days we have sent it to the Tata Memorial Cancer Center Mumbai and once we get the results and we will be doing one of these drug delivery systems in the near future so this is the one of the interesting uh, species, the Serata bacterium. And similarly, all over the world, they are the utilizing this one. And this species, these metabolites, not only having the uh, anti-cancer activities, their metabolite, they are having the multiple effect also. They are, they are, these metabolites are used in the treatment of the irritable bowel syndrome also. And topically, they are, uh, it can be used as a, a sunscreen protective factor. And we, even though we are working on this sensitive. So all over the world, not only the conventional drug delivery systems, these bacteria are utilized this one. So having said the advantage, uh, having said the why the bacteria are utilized uh, as a drug delivery systems. So for any conventional drug delivery system or whatever may be the drug delivery systems, the pharmaceutical scientists that develop, there is always pros and cons for the drug delivery system. Like only we have to utilize what are the best choice what are the patient com complaints and finally for the Indian market, the cost, the cost is one of the factors. So there will be always an advantages as well as the disadvantages are associated with this one. So quickly going to the what are the advantages of the microbial drug based systems. 
modified bacteria cause colonization of the intestinal lumen which specifically conveys the protective cytokines growth factors and competitive inhibitors carriers used for the targeted specific drug delivery system as a result the toxicity minimize host immune response to vectors and maximize local therapeutic concentration to of active ingredient at particular site economical treatment for the chronic diseases like irritable bowel syndrome can be achieved by the expanding the idea of microbial drug delivery by means of the local action to avoid the resistance of the tumor cells to the anti cancer agents the bacterial therapy combined with the taxocytotoxic agents can be also explored in the form of bacterial cellular envelopes that is the cellular envelopes are the encapsulated by cytotoxic agents and along with this bacteria so doxorubicin is a classic example which is undergoing the this one now as a result disadvantages maybe the dose associated toxicity is there sometimes if they are not properly formulated there is a systemic infection combination of the chemotherapy is suggested with the bacterial based are not utilize the key portions of the cancer tissues there may be the loading drug loading drug process because these chemotherapeutic agents may not be properly loaded into the envelopes or the bacterial cellulose sometimes the dna mutation is another possibility which may lead down into this one the same thing this was faced by our uh, we have faced this when uh, this research scientist got this microbes serrata from the nigeria and we when we found that when we are isolating these meta metabolites they are, suddenly they went onto the mutations they have changed this one so mutation is one of the biggest factor and safety and the regulatory concern these are the two things so far there are no safety as well as an guideline uh, i um, regulatory guidelines are not clear to launch this and different side effects and finally what indian people will look indian market will put to the common person is the cost effective whether it is the cost of the therapy is inside our limit that is one of the one of the factor this one now i will go into the different i will give couple of examples like how the bacteria are explored and all these are under the clinical studies they are not there in the market this one they may hit in couple of years years to go and some of them are in phase one clinical trials phase two clinical trials and especially the european countries sweden as well as then uh, even the countries small countries like israel israel they are also actively working on this one i have pleasure in working uh, when i was in industry i was pleasure in working with one of the industries of the sweden on this bacterial drug delivery systems right now the bacteria as a tumorocidal agents some of the live stains of the bacteria in the form of the beak these stain shows direct actions on the cancer cells are used as a vehicle to transport the anti tumor agents and while doing the literature or while going through the market search it was found that many functions of the live attenuated non pathogenic bacteria as an anti cancer agent or they can be as a carrier for the drugs is also improved so these are the few examples as an tumorocidal agents this one certain species like cholerysis vibrio cholera as well as the listeria monocytogenes and even the escherichia coli are currently discovered as an anti cancer agents they are the doing the they are using either the pure or genetically modified this one and especially the vibrio cholera these are the most commonly used <clears throat> are uh, utilized in the various drug delivery systems as the tumorocidal agents as a carriers we always think about the nano drug delivery systems we talk about similarly bacterium as a vector for drug delivery systems e coli as well as the streptococcus they are used as a vectors after uh, after encapsulating removing all the internal parts this one that is uh, host and uppermost cell membrane we incorporate the drug and we do genetic modifying and we can utilize them as a vectors for this one so in this the bacterial species like e coli and streptococcus are the leading similarly the spores which are the protective form of the bacteria when they are the unfavorable conditions even these spores can be used as a drug delivery systems probiotic properties of the oral bacterial therapy was discovered mostly by the bacillus spores the spores of many anaerobic bacteria like this species 
nivogi non toxigen and histolyticum these are the various species which are the actively utilized for anti cancer drugs like minorebelin doxycycline mitomycin and n number of the anti cancer drugs are been utilized and most of them are in the phase 1 clinical trials for this uh, for this drug delivery systems continuing with this, the same thing bacterial drug delivery systems and example were the pseudonomas these are the few collect collected from the literature they are the utilized this one then the bacterial toxins bacterial toxins mostly used to destroy the tumors and in this the leading is the diphtheria toxins as well as the pseudonomas exotoxins they what they do they suppress the protein synthesis as well as the destruction of the cells as well as the initiation of the apoptosis then the bacterial cellular envelopes they are the known as an ghost so inside the bacterial cells there are different materials are there that is the contents are there so when they are the lysis when they are the removed and when we utilize only the uppermost membrane they termed as a bacterial ghost so this bacterial ghost are not able to multiply as the cytoplasm has been removed and certain components of the dna has been explained this one and these envelopes can be utilized as a carriers may be doing by the different uh, uh, formulation techniques they can be incorporated in the um, nanoparticles as well as the lyophilized part and when they are the utilized many of the drugs as well as the nucleic acids as well as the antigens we can incorporate and we can be used as a drug delivery system so these are the examples another example this one biotinylated agents are inserted into the cytoplasmic membrane of genetically modified e coli nm52 as a bacterial ghost so these are the certain anti cancer agents like doxycycline is also administered systematically showing this one then pro drug delivery systems everywhere pharmaceutical scientists are utilizing what whatever the conventional is used similarly the pro drug approach can be also utilized we know the idea of the pro drug emerges due to unsuitable side effects microbial it undergoes bio transformation we know similarly the drug like 5 fluoroacetosin <clears throat> is converted into 5 fluorouracil by using the enzymes as well as then using the microbes like sporogens so similarly similarly another example is to increase the response that is to improve the immunogenicity of the particular person enhancement of the antigenicity of the carcinogenic cells by using the bacteria is one of this one now what we are talking about during the covid conditions either improve your immunity by giving the various herbal teas that tea green tea this one. similarly in this case also by utilizing some of the bacterial we can improve this immuno this one now what are the, the presently which is going on which are the active the use of bacteria in the drug delivery that is the clostridium novi nt is under investigation for the unique properties this bacteria shows capability to permeate and disrupt the tissues and boost the host immune system similarly lactobacillus lactis it is another class of the bacteria examined for the inflamed related to the clotic uh, uh, colitis as well as the gastrointestinal disorders especially irritable bowel syndromes irritable bowel syndrome so these are the active uh, drug delivery systems which are there this one now having said to that bacterial systems now the virology virus is also playing an important role neither nevertheless of more of bacteria virus not much of the research is carrying out but nevertheless some amount of the research is carried out on the virus also naturally occurring the nanoparticles like viral based particles holds the great potential in the nano medicines fields always know what we are looking for the nano medicines so such particles have shown no toxicity in vivo as well as in in vitro deeming to be the safe bio compatible as well as the cheaper to the alternate to the synthetic compound this one now similar to the bacterial therapy like the genes as this one in the virus also there are the different therapies that is known as the virotherapy now this is one of the applications of the biotechnology in the virotherapy where viruses are used as a therapeutic agents for the treatment similar to the bacteria like a cancer as well as the various metabolic disorders 
Now, the antigens are oncolytic viruses, viral vectors for the gene therapy and viral gymnotherapy are the considered as the three subdivisions of this one. When the virus scientists are the working, they consider this one type of the uh, area to be considered this one. So these are the three anti-cancer oncolytic viruses, viral vectors, as well as the gene therapy or the immunotherapy or can be by introducing the virus can be immuno, uh, can be improved or not this one. Now in 40s and the 50s, the virus were evaluated for the various model for the treatment of this one. And one of the classic examples for this one, oncolytic virus known as the Riga virus, which was developed and registered in 2014 by the Institute of the Microbiology in the Lativa. Now, research reveals that the death rate of the IBIS tumor patients was reduced so much folds, that is around more than six, uh, six folds with Riga So similar to the researchers from the Herbal University, and not only this one, in India also, they are the working on this various aspect of the virotherapy. Similar to the bacteria, variolal immunotherapy is also there, where there is a tendency to improve the immunity of this one, examples. And the virus-like particles, when we talk about the nanoparticles, here is also virus particles, they are the nanoparticle drug delivery systems are utilized, unlike the virus, virus-like particles of the any they are the devoid of the genetic material, whatever the material, pathogen material, uh, materials which are the present, they are the removed and then they generally considered as a safe system, this one. So these are the derived the virus like particles are the derived like uh, uh, families like parboviridin as well as flavoviridin. These are the two where the researchers are working for the virus like particles. Similar to this one, vaccines, immunity against only one strain of the microbes is provided by the single vaccines. Whereas multivalent vaccines, which showed by using the different type of the vaccines like particles, virus like particles, if we can formulate in the vaccines, not only they give the single strain, but when give the multiple effect of this one, same as this one, they are under the approval for this one papillomerosis. Similar to this one, virosomes, they are the envelopes. Virosomes are the restructured viral envelopes. They are the used to deliver the vaccines as well as the carriers. Virosomes technology can be explored for the drugs delivery like antibiotics, anti-cancer, as well as then steroids. The main composition of the name essentially the viral like glycoproteins within the cell membrane. So these are the uh, some of the virus they can be used, which are utilized for the virosomal this one. Virosomes the same thing, it is explained this one, and they can be utilized for the topical as well as the oral, and especially the uh, transdermal is very less, but especially the uh, injectable formulations. Now, similar to the uh, virus as well as this one, even the algal is also not far beyond this one. But the research on this algal for the targeted medicines is very much restricted, comparatively the bacteria, but nevertheless, they are also in the forefront of this one. This is one of the statistical data of the scientific publications where the marine algal derivatives are utilized for the drug delivery systems based on sulfated polymers like we are using, uh, they are utilizing as a nano as well as the microparticulates, as well as the hydrogels, as well as the beads and other systems like vaccines, they can be this one. So as a result, from the 2010 to the 2015, which we go, it is slowly, it is increasing. So this indicates that the microbial drug delivery system is gaining the popularity, whether it is a bacteria or the virus as well as this one. These are the couple of examples of the algal, they are the user for the cancer treatments. Now they are the genetically modified diatoms like pseudonona. These simultaneous attachment of the genetically engineered alga is utilized live diatom silica immunization method. They are incorporated with the various immunoglobins to a binding site and with the biosilica diatoms and encapsulating and hydrophobic anti-cancer drug like camptopithin. So this is the drug which is incorporated after taking this one. And this is one of the examples for the algal. Nevertheless, this research is going very slowly because of the some disadvantages which are the associated this one. So these are the same thing which is continued this one. Now, nevertheless, fungi, fungi based drug development systems like anisopilae species has been genetically modified species and especially the sporocytes, the main agent for the malarial uh, infections. These are the used the sporocytes activate when they get attached to the salivary glands. The fungi enters into the mosquito through the uh, cuticle travel and the hemolymph and then they inhibit the attachment of the sporocytes. 
the fungus is genetically modified by expressing the peptide 1 which prevents the attachment of the sporocyte this one nevertheless this fungal is also saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast which is very popular uh, this one effectively used for the carrier for the drug delivery systems it is one of the transgenomic acid is used for the acidic environment now what are the routes of uh, administration for the microbes these are the few couple of routes even though the oral drug delivery is, is common but couple of drug delivery systems like intratumor injections are the has been explored similarly oral administration there are a few examples of this one e coli uh, bacillus these are the all the, whether in past by i have whatever the i have explained this one they have utilized and they are doing similarly intranasal injection by mycobacterium process streptococcus gordonini and the lactobacillus pentosus so these are the utilized by they and but among this most of them are um, oral they are the used this one so whenever we are formulating any type of the drug delivery systems the technical people will feel one of the important is that is the regulatory aspects now the drug delivery using the microbes is the diversified systems compared to the conventional route either by the vegetative state or the live state or the capable of self promulgating the guidelines and the recommendation for the genetic engineering techniques like recombinant dna technologies for this provided even though they are provided like us fd authorities or office of the biotechnology authorities but still there is a lot many to go to this one because there are not clear guidelines to this one few guidelines which are available in the non clinical set this one that is for the guidance for the in industry that is consideration for the development of the toxicity studies while doing this drug delivery systems similarly who document is entitled the who guidelines on the non clinical evaluation for the vaccines because nowadays most of them are going for the vaccine instead of the most of them are going for the vaccines so these are the guidelines that are available briefly guidelines that are available for the drug delivery systems so these are the few areas where some of the bacterial interventions which are considering under the clinical studies so that is vnp2009 that is completed for the uh, phase 1 clinical trials advanced metastatic solid tissue similarly various head neck cancer in cis brain central these are on the field if you see all these are in the phase 1 clinical trials and some of them are recently entered into the phase 2 clinical trials now having that what are the conclusion for the, this one microbial drug delivery system shows the promising results based on this literature as well as the research which is going on across the world it is it is it seems to be a promising drug delivery systems even though there are certain obstacles will be there there will be always reservations there will be the always resistance from anything when it is a new to be launched similar to the drug delivery systems the pharmaceutical scientist or the multidisciplinary scientist has to face so many obstacles so to solve this problem bacterial therapy combined with cytotoxic agent has been proposed initially bacterial products like toxins spores etc are the useful candidate for the solid tumors furthermore the ghosts taxis microbats and the bacteriofaction are the other strategies to destruct the this one bioengineered the bacteria and the virus are the mainly focused on the potential activity to treats like cancer colitis gastrointestinal disorders hiv engineered bacteria investigate variety of the applications regulatory norms are the big hurdles for the genetic modification in the microorganisms as one need to be sure about the safety because the safety patient compliance cost these are the few factors when we develop this one so similar to this one back to uh, drug delivery system with uh, uh, this also is one of the this one now ending with i would like to place my sincere thanks to the management care college of pharmaceutical sciences pharmacy varangal for providing me the wonderful opportunity in fact where we are the looking for this type of the challenges where this type of the interactions so i will very pleasure to my sincere thanks to the management care college of pharmacy varangal and uh, my friendly thanks to the principal as well as the faculty members and the organizing committee and especially dr k kumar swami and dr madhavi as well as the mrs t lavanya and college of pharmacy warangal and thanks to the wonderful participants students so thanks to to all and you can reach me at basarkarji@yahoo.com and we are working at snjb college of pharmacy we are working on n number of the projects around uh, especially the anti cancer agent by using the bacterial drug delivery systems as well as the nanoparticles as well as the uh, some novel drug delivery systems 
uh, you can reach me you can call me on this phone number at any time point of view for the technical assistance or for any help on this one so thank you very much once again thank you very much back to thank you sir maybe for this thank you sir your session was very excellent and clear now the session is open for discussion for all the participants yeah even though it is not available you can call me you can reach me on this one even though because there are the internet uh, problems may be there or you can uh, yeah, you can post me on my email id what are your questions or what are your help and whatever there this one i am always open to uh, the students okay so there's a question from umar farooq saying how can yeah, we right. challenge how can we challenge bacterial okay. resistance how can we challenge bacterial resistance in future mainly with reference to tb in future no i am not hello uh, sir you can hello. you can we can, we can on... modify by yeah 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 bacterial Sorry. resistance we can modify by the genetic engineering techniques because the genetics people are closely working with us we if we can modify the genetic engineering process by the bacteria because this bacteria as such are any microbes they are not fully utilized we have to something we have to modify we have to modify by using the genetic mod even though literature research is going on but most of the uh, countries where i have visited lot of work is to be uh, done by modifying this one to avoid this reason because as i said spores are highly resistant even though we said the spores are utilized as a drug delivery systems but not always because the resistance will be the one of the uh, biggest challenge for the pharmaceutical scientist even we can do by this either modification genetic modification or any chemical modifications by utilizing the medicinal chemistry person if we can do definitely we can achieve but so far we have not achieved the positive results have been achieved so that's what even though this bacterial drug delivery system has started couple of years back at most probably it is a 10 years back started but the new and newer challenges are coming especially this as i mentioned drug delivery system cost and the resistance so still we have not achieved the positive results in any of the clinical studies so there is lot of risk to be about this one because it is completely new area to us bacterial drug delivery is completely new area to uh, pharmaceutical scientist are all over the world as well as the globe sir this is another question from pravin kumar okay sir you can see on the screen sir you come back to this browser window and you can see the question on the screen sir is microbial drug microbial delivery system currently used as a standard route of drug administration no still it is not validated properly so it is still it is under the clinical studies phase 1 clinical studies and few of them are entered into the phase 2 clinical studies especially in the countries like sweden but still it is not used it is a challenge for the pharmaceutical scientist because there are so many hazards are there because we have to see for the alternative drug delivery systems in the next generation it won't be any conventional drug delivery system just like we are mentioning artificial intelligence where we heard 10 years back we don't know anything about artificial intelligence now everywhere we are talking similar to that one we may go for this uh, microbial drug delivery system after a couple of years once it is developed and once we validate this one definitely it will be this one microbiologists all over the world along with the pharmaceutical scientists multidisciplinary even i have in i have participated in one of the a uh, techniques uh, when i was in dr reddy's i was participated in the sweden in one of this one but as a pharmaceutical scientist i have the very little knowledge about the pharma because we study only little about the microbiology in only in second year we study only this one but when we go into the microbial drug delivery structure and uh, uh, sensitivity and uh, demon everything we have to study of this one because finally we are the responsible as a pharmaceutical scientist we are the responsible how to deliver the drug delivery system because we as i said in the very first 
Chanakya said, we are the Brahmas of pharmaceutical pharmacy of the trained delivery system. So, so we know that for this pharmaceutical, we have to study because many of the students, when I do this, they see all. Only micro only see okay they see mystery but when you work in also industry especially in the drug delivery system you must know all the subjects very thoroughly you must know microbiology is the same important no who has participated who has anticipated this microbiological microbes is also one of the drug delivery systems and the second generation is robots i was working robots is generated and next generation after 10 15 years these robots injections will be entered into our system whether subcutaneous or intravenously and this robot will be entering and they will be reaching the targeted drug delivery system uh, target and they will be releasing so so far there is no uh, marketed preparations this is only theory this is which research is going on we may expect in near future by the time you may grow or you will be a research scientist. Maybe you may be working with this. This is a challenging aspect for us. How can as intravenous I, I am not able to get the, this one. Can you explain how, how can intravenous immunoglobulins help COVID-19 no, I, I, I think I am not right the person to comment on this one because I don't have much of knowledge on this one. I, I, I am not the right person to comment. Basically, I am a pharmaceutical formulation scientist. So I am looking for the formulation development of this one. So maybe I am a little bit uh, this one. I may not be able to. Uh, you can uh, send it me on email. I definitely I will talk with one of the seniors for the working system. Definitely I will be able to this one. Okay, so if, if you are, there is no question, please uh, allow me to because I am going to have. Yeah, please. Yes, sir. thank you, sir, for the excellent and clear explanation. And session was very engaging and interesting, sir. Clear explanation. And you and you explained the bacterial based and virus based and fungi based, and it was very clear, sir. Thank you, sir, for your interesting session. And now I request Thank you. Dr. Thank you very much. Kishore. Thanks. And now I request Dr. Kishore, sir, to sir, deliver a vote, vote of thanks. Uh, good afternoon, uh, everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. It's indeed a it's indeed great, a informative, great informative, informative and elaborate session. And elaborate session. Thank, thank you, thank, Dr. Basarkar. Uh, everybody started hating uh, bacteria and virus nowadays because of COVID. But uh, you have shown the good side of uh, bacteria, sir. Uh, in a way, showing you know how the bacteria is going to be a good drug delivery system. Hopefully, in the next few years, we are going to come out with these drug delivery systems, which are presently in phase one. Thank you, Dr. Basarkar, for your uh, right. valuable time. Uh, thank you, Dr. Suman Rudrangi, uh, who gave the first uh, session, which uh, good uh, pictorial representation and informative session. I also thank uh, Professor E. Sudhir Kumar, who is the chief patron, for initiating this uh, 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 webinar in spite of uh, you know busy academic schedule in the students. Uh, I also thank uh, Professor B. Vijay Kumar, our director and uh, patron, for extending all his support by all means to make sure that uh, the program is done in a grand way. I thank organizing committee, especially Dr. Kumaraswamy, who has been uh, playing a key role in preparation of flyer, communicating with the technical team, and also coordinating with all the staff, and making sure that the program went smoothly without any problem. Uh, what of thanks would be really uh, uh, not uh, good if I don't thank anchors uh, Srimati D. Shalini and Dr. K. Madhavi, who have brought colors to the uh, presentation, and with a good smile and ease, they have made sure that the program went on really smooth. And uh, without uh, Dr. Ishwar, a MIBO group uh, technical committee member, I don't think this program would have been such a big success. Uh, and last but not the least, participants. We have participants from uh, West Bengal to Gujarat and Rajasthan, and from Kerala and Tamil Nadu to Jammu and Kashmir. I'm very happy to say that we have more than 1,950 registrations done across the length and breadth of the country. 
and i'm mm -hmm. sure uh, the presentation of dr basarkar and dr uh, uh, rudrangi is well uh, received by all the students and uh, this will instigate uh, innovative ideas in the students uh, thank you one and all now i hand over uh, to dr b vijay kumar our uh, patron and uh, director of uh, care college of pharmacy to say a few words and then mm -hmm. dr kumar swami will close the session over to dr vijay kumar please <clears throat> thank you ganesh hello ganesh thank you for accepting our invitation thank you thank you hello ganesh it's my pleasure yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I, 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 have, i have forced i have been i have to accept my colleagues uh, this one more than friends nothing is there <laughs> so i have to accept yeah, whatever yeah. may be the busy schedule i have to accept my friends in invitation so i left everything and um, obviously it is a um, yeah, technical guide as well as the body must that our mission of any team members right yeah you are uh, you are planning yeah. i think no you are uh, you are planning i think okay. oh, over to kumar swami please oh, over to kumar swami please thank you sir dr pishor sir uh, on behalf of uh, management and staff uh, we thank you all the participants for uh, making this uh, webinar uh, a grand success we look forward uh, conducting a more uh, webinars in uh, coordination with the mybo group uh, dr bsn uh, ishwar sir Uh, thank you sir thank you so much for uh, your great uh, support and monitoring uh, thank you sir thank you very much thank you all thank you all have, have, have a happy durga ashtami thank you sir thank you thank you thank you thank you all thank you thank you thank you thank you ha ओके Thank <laughs> you.